Here we go. 1951 Dodge. Whole lot of steel. Very little technology. Power nothing. Manual everything. Heading down a country road. I bought this truck on an eBay auction. And one of the things that struck me about that was thinking back to how it would have been purchased back in 1951 where a small town out in the Midwest somewhere where you had to walk in and you had to, uh, you know, glad hand and discuss. You probably knew the guy that you bought it from. And then some 50 some odd years later, sitting in my underpants in my living room with my wireless laptop, hitting buy it now and uh, taking the option for $275 more to have somebody loaded on the back of a flatbed. Then a week later, it's sitting in my driveway. Sight unseen prior to that. Three speed, manual transmission on the column, commonly known as uh, three on the tree. And uh, driving this, uh, it, you know, everybody has heard the expression of, you know, well, that thing handles like a truck. And I can assure you, this was the truck that they were thinking of when they came up with that saying. Uh, it, it drives very rough, it's hard to turn, it's hard to stop because it weighs so much and the uh, technology behind the braking system, um, I don't even know if I would use the word technology for it because it, it literally uh, is, is, seems to be about a step, maybe two, above the uh, Fred Flintstone jamming your feet into the sand and trying to slow yourself down. Although it is a lot of fun to drive, it's not a lot of fun to drive in northern New Jersey where there's about 582 million people, all of which in a hurry to get somewhere. So it becomes, uh, becomes a bit of a challenge to use as an everyday vehicle. Uh, but on a Saturday or a Sunday afternoon, uh, it really does take you back to the old days when uh, there was probably uh, more than just a few of these trucks in this area where we still have a farm or two around, but uh, back then it was full of farms. This was uh, their job rated series, which had been built primarily for folks on farms, delivery folks, and so forth. The engine is a, uh, as you can see, it's a very basic engine where the head of the engine and the engine block actually almost appear to be one versus today's engines where there's a very complex set of valves inside the head. Uh, the air cleaner itself is actually full of oil, so there was no great ability to use paper or cotton or any types of filters. Actually, this oil bath itself prevented things from getting down into the carburetor. One of my favorite features about this truck is what they call the lighthouse cab. You see it has the curved windows along with the flat panel window in the back. Uh, it gave the driver uh, much more visibility in terms of things that were going on around the truck, whether you were working, you had workers next to you, uh, moving past animals or whatever. It provided a greater sense of visibility. Here by the truck bed, you'll see another sign of the times of 1951 where there were no quick latches. Everything was done uh, you know, in a manual fashion. So if you wanted to get into the bed, you had to unhook it. If you didn't want it to slam down into the bottom, you had to rehook the chain on to hold that up. Uh, these planks are original oak planks that were installed back in 1951 and uh, there are several areas you can see in there where there's hoof kicks and scratches because this truck actually was used at one point to uh, transport sheep back and forth. Here you see what is the basis of today's Ram trucks and if you look very closely at this because it is all chrome, starting at the back you can see the hind leg coming into the body of the ram, coming into its front bent legs and its head straight down with the two ram horns coming straight ahead. So this was the, the vision of the ram charging forward. In comparison to my, uh, my more modern vehicle where I could sit in my living room and click a remote button and have it start, this vehicle you had to turn the electricity of the vehicle on. You had to set the choke at the appropriate level depending on how cold it was and uh, how long since it had been last started. You had to adjust the throttle knob so as you were starting the engine enough gas would go in to allow it to fire up. Now we start with a little uh, pedal dance down below here where I'm literally crossing my, uh, my left leg over onto the gas pedal. Well I bring my right leg up onto the starter button and I give it a quick push. Little flutter of the gas, I've got that running and at the same time you got to get your hand back up and make sure you get it adjusted to keep it running to allow it to warm up. You 
can't go anywhere in this vehicle and not get into a conversation either short or long. Uh, one that really sticks with me is there was a woman that I would guess would have been in about her, you know, late 60s, maybe mid 60s. And uh, we were talking about it for a little while and uh, it had reminded her of her childhood and she was not gonna leave there until I took her for a ride in the truck. So here I was driving uh, for about 10 minutes with a woman that I'd never met before, and uh, which wouldn't have bothered me if she was about 22, but uh, since she was about 72, it uh, wasn't quite as much fun as, uh, as one might have expected, but uh, it was nice, to, uh, nice that she had an interest in the truck.